Hey everyone, this is Chris and Sandy Bent with The Chris and Sandy Show. We get up close and personal with some amazing guests throughout the entertainment industry. And today, like I say on every episode, we got a great one for you. Who do we have? Yes, we have Wayne Nelson from the Little River Band and also his wife, Rhonda. Wayne has the distinct honor of being the longest running member of the Little River Band to date. Nobody has been in the Little River Band longer than Nelson. This year, 2021, marks his 41st year in the band. And his wife, Rhonda, wrote a book called A Different Life. And we're Thanks. excited to have them both on the show today. So welcome to the show. Good to be with you guys. Thanks for having us. You know, I always like to start the show out the same way because it's been a crazy year, especially oh, for entertainment. Has. Mm -hmm. How did COVID affect y'all and what have y'all done to maneuver through this crazy maze we have? Um, well, hang on. I want to make sure my phone does not interrupt us. Uh, yeah. uh, um, first of all, we, 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 we caught COVID on top oh, wow. of everything else. Um, so oh, we, wow. we know it from the, the standpoint of losing work and also from the standpoint of, of, being closed into our house. I, I, I've i traveled so much. I was like, oh, gosh, that twists my arm. I want to stay home. Uh, but it, it affected Rhonda heavily because it, it just closed us off. Um, mm -hmm. We got a nice view and a nice home, but um, it still was that social aspect was was missing. Right. Um, but what we did was we, we, we kept hearing this phrase called, oh, we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. well, we knew we weren't in the same boat. We we're in the same storm, but we were all in different boats. And so we, yes. we decided to do a podcast called Same Storm, Different Boat. And we oh, interviewed wow. lots of friends and lots of people from different yeah. walks of life, from truckers to teachers to nurses, um, students. In, students, investment bankers, so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. we had this little project where we we're going uh, that, that we went with and we did about 15, 20 episodes, something like that. It was, it was a lot of fun and it kept us involved with each other doing something together that was positive. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she is involved with a, uh, a, a group of people that deal with um, problems with people that have asthma because she's, that's one of, that's a condition that she has. Mm -hmm. And we've started to do podcasts talking about living on the road and, and different things like that. So, oh, wow. On top of that, we had a new album come out called Black Tie, which is a live record with an orchestra. We had to mix it and get it prepared for release. Um, and then on top of all of that, my, a friend wow. of mine said, you better put your story down before you forget it or don't care anymore. So <laughs> we did 10 Zoom episodes, each about an hour long, covering from when he and I met in high school all mm -hmm. the way through mm -hmm. 2020. So that's 55 year friendship. That wow. we oh, wow. talking about the ins and outs of the music business. So yeah. the truth of the matter is with editing and doing all of that, I've been sitting here like, you know, busier than ever, 15 hours a day <laughs> editing and, and getting stuff ready to go. So um, kind of happy to get back on the road and do what we what we do. The <laughs> you know, that's just like for us, you know, we started this show January of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple months before COVID, and I remember um, thinking, you know, our, our original plan was to interview 100 people our first year. And we thought if we did that, w that would just, it would be a great foundation for yeah. the show. Then COVID happens. And I remember telling Sandy, I was like, you know, this may be a silver lining because, you know, people who normally wouldn't come on a brand new show, they might actually be willing to come on a brand new show because we're just nobodies. We're just two people yeah. started this crazy idea. And exactly. because of that, we end up doing over 300 interviews last year, and we're over 400 now. And we've even had people like Brian Luttrell from the Backstreet Boys on, Randy Travis, yes. Sarah Evans, y'all. So it, it's just yes. been like a crazy adventure here. It's good fun for you too, because you're seeing back, you're seeing behind the curtain, um, which was a lot of what Rhonda's book was about. Um, mm -hmm. The title "A Different Life" came from one of our songs, um, oh, wow. and it was it was important to her to get out there that. It is a different life, but we are the same people, people yeah. as everybody same else. People. Mm -hmm. And that was the that was the crux of the book. Um, uh, I was blown away because I'd known her for 15 years and didn't know how well she could write, other than cards <laughs> that come to me. And I went, "You you got a great you got a way with words." But boy, she she sat down and put her nose to the to the to the paper and 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 wrote that book all by herself, no help from uh, anybody. 
oh, wow. the pictures or whatever was quite a project. So 41 years, what's that like? Does it, I mean, because not many people can say that they've been even in the industry that long, but much less with with one band. Yes. It's it's um well it's it's humbling, I'll tell you that, um, to to continue the 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 history and the legacy of the band because the music we find out more and more every night. The music mm. means so much to so many people. Um, and we we started doing something really interesting at the beginning of 2020. We asked the crowd, um, that was our, going to be my 40th year and the band's 45th. I, I, I said, how many people are here for the first time to see Little River Band live? Oh, wow. I expected a few, yeah, maybe, maybe half. Mm -hmm. Every single night so far, it's been close to 80 to 85% of the crowd. Wow. Oh, I mean, wow. So many hands go up, <laughs> which if you look at it from the perspective of being here now for 41 years, we're still reaching people that have never seen the band live. We're still reaching people to, to spread the word even further about the band's music. And that's along with being able to give back to causes and charities. Uh, that is something that, uh, you know, musicians can't, they can't count on it. And you really don't, add that up. I remember when I started with my buddy Al in the garage band, at that point, if you stayed in a band for more than a year and a half or two years, you were considered a sellout. <laughs> you know, you're, oh, you're, you know, you're just living on your past and whatever. And, oh, uh, wow. Wow. and then bands, then, then the stones lasted for 10 years and the Beatles, wow. lasted for, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. now bands are 50, 55 years old and still making music because people still want to hear it and it makes mm -hmm. them happy. And you have the opportunity to have, draw people together and raise money for funds for people who can't, you know, who don't have that yeah. means. So mm -hmm. it is, it, you add that all up, truly it's an honor to, uh, to, to still be in this position and knock on wood, still be physically able <laughs> to do the show the way it needs to be done. So when you look back on your career at the very beginning, you know, a lot of people would ask, when did you know you wanted to do music? But I always like to go deeper than that. When did it actually click inside of you? that this could be a career move for you? Uh, it was a long way down the road, I can tell you that. Um, the, <laughs> the music, my, my parents were involved in music and local theater and church and whatever. So music got, the music got infused at a very early age, three, three four years old, um, and then continued on until, like I said, I met my buddy and they were putting a garage band together. And I said, well, I can sing a little bit. And then it just evolved from there. Um, but the ups and downs, uh, going to college, you don't have enough money to eat, uh, uh, so on and so forth. You, you get out of college and you go, I want to be a musician and you're pumping gas in Chicago in the winter and cleaning people's windshields. And, uh, I, you know, I bust tables for a couple of weekends at a restaurant before I got so sick, I couldn't do it anymore. So I mm -hmm. uh, flew, so I got mm -hmm. fired. Um, I, I, I hung sheet metal for, for the guy who needed help again in the winter in Illinois in open buildings, <laughs> you're out there with sharp sheet metal and, and it's cold. What, I mean, I'm lucky. I still got 10 fingers. I should have lost a few along wow. the way, wow. but it never, it didn't click until finally in Chicago, I met some people who actually had a solid job for a couple of years. Oh, and wow. that's when thing that's when things started to roll up until then it was, bouncing from one thing to the other and not really knowing um, we're, we're independent contractors and we have this mindset of, uh, you know, here, because you got to have a business owner mindset or you're not going to make it. Well, you're not. And, but, but the other mindset is I've got food for a week. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on Friday, you know, that kind of thing. And then, mm -hmm. then the next week rolls on. And then, but as you start to meet people and network with them, you find out there's all these different doors Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you, it, you, you, you just keep going. Like you say, you, you, you can't give up and you can't worry about what, what somebody said or an opinion. You just got to plow forward and, and follow your heart. And sooner or later, that's going to land you somewhere that you want to be. Fingers crossed. It's not <laughs> unlike, it's not unlike what happens in Nashville. Yeah. 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 You know, a, a, a songwriter or an artist, a new artist, they go to town and they're, they're doing the same thing. They're 
making the rounds, playing the venues that'll have the new artists, the open mic nights and the- And they say it's a 10 year city. That's right. And then they're, you know, they're waiting tables or, you know, working at a grocery store or whatever. So it's kind of interesting that through the years, the process is still the same. Mm -hmm. It's just a little different in regards to the whole ordeal with record labels and things like that. That's all different. But Do you think yeah. social media has made it, I mean, it made it easier, but harder both at the same time? Because like when it comes to record labels, one thing we've learned is now because of social media, um, if you don't have a much of a following, they won't even look at you, don't matter how good you are. We're used to, you could walk in the door of a record label and if they liked you, they'd sign you on the spot. It just don't happen no more. You have to, you have to have a following. But then on the other end, now you have a way to actually build something that you didn't have 10 years ago. That you have your own control over too. That's, I think that's what people don't understand about record labels. It, it really is a um, double-edged sword, isn't it? You, you want, you want to go in and you want to present your talent, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now you're, you, you're followed in by, well, let's, let's bring up your Facebook page or your Instagram. Page. <laughs> you know, how many followers do you have? Oh, you, you, you don't make the cut. And you're like, what? What about the song? And which, which, which is very bizarre to, to you know somebody that is old school and still feels the importance of making new music. That's what. That's part of what we're supposed to be doing. Um, so, but 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 Rhonda's right. You can be an independent artist, mm -hmm. develop your mm -hmm. following, and never leave your house. I mean, we, we know stories about people who are making six figures with their own music, their own following, and that's their industry. They're doing it their way. You yeah. can do it your way, and you don't have to answer to anybody else, and um, that's got to be very gratifying. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Old dogs have a hard time learning that scenario, and Little River Band is such a... Uh, you know, such a history and, and a, um, a legacy of great live shows. And like I say, these audiences are uh, more than half the audiences are still being turned on to what they, you know, as much of it as they can remember from seventies and eighties and, and hit songs. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there, the, the live thing is, is, is very vibrant. I think record labels are slowly but surely disappearing. I don't, I don't see them, as having the same influence as a Spotify yeah. or an Apple. And only for what, like, I remember we brought on um, Joe Kelly from CDX Nashville. We interviewed him mm -hmm. and we were talking about this whole record label stuff. And he, and he, and he was like, um, he says, any artist that doesn't have much of a following and they get signed, he says, they've been screwed. They may not know it, yeah. but they've been screwed. He says, you should never go to a label till you build the foundation strong enough. So now you call the shots. So that way, if they say no, it's not a big deal to you because you know yes. what your your make is like he said. Your there are people making one hundred and fifty thousand a year profit from their music business, and people would never hear of their name because of the tools that people have now. So there's no reason to jump on the record label bag bandwagon. He says, but on the other end, if you start to explode out there, he said there's so many little things that have to happen that. It, that you get to the point where you have no choice to get a record label because they have, you know, he says, but until you get there, you shouldn't be on a label. <laughs> <laughs> we had the opportunity of meeting someone who won American Idol one year and Wayne chatted with them and, you know, some of that same stuff. It's, it's almost as much as these and I say kids, but it's not always kids. It, it was much younger kids in the beginning when American Idol, but there's all ages on there. Yeah. As much yeah. as these people dream of winning a show like that, they don't understand how they sign their life away, in, their life away and their career. Five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it's really a blessing to not win it, to be honest. Like I remember um, I'm Facebook friends with Gabby Barrett's dad and sister on Facebook. And it's interesting hearing Gabby Barrett's story through their eyes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, he, and he always talks about how when, you know, when she took third place on Idol, she, they thought it was like the worst thing. And he says, now when you look back on it, he says th he's, he thanks God she did not win 
<laughs> because it actually gave her the freedom to be where she is today, or this wouldn't be all happening now for her. That's right. And what happens, and I think you can, you can look at the ones that have won and been truly successful. Everything they do is driven by, is, is dictated by the label, the mm -hmm. way they look, the way they dress, the way they, you know, where they perform, what music they do, you know, what songs are chosen. So it's, it's hard to, it's hard for people to understand that, you know, going back to your original question, what do you think social media has done to the industry? It's hard for people to understand that for a lot of artists, it's, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. That pathway is a blessing and it propels their career much faster than if they're just you yeah. know, doing it the old way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a, it is a double-edged sword for sure. And, 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 you know, and I think this is also the part where a lot of parents, you know, again, when a, usually when a person says, I want to be an artist or a musician, the parents automatically cringe because in most cases they see Blake Shelton, and then they see their brother-in-law or whoever who never made it. But, but what a lot of parents don't understand is when you look at the music business as a whole, there's so many levels between those two that people can make money being in the industry without being Blake Shelton. Right. Absolutely. And that's where that, the, um, the attitude you talked about, that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, whether you're surfing, whether you're swimming upstream with a label or you're swimming upstream by yourself, you know, with 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 social media, those are the two, I guess you'd call them the two extremes. <laughs> yeah. You still have to you still have to have the work to grind and the drive uh, to, um, you know, to persevere because there's pitfalls no matter which way you turn. So um, that is still at the core of, quote unquote, making it or making yourself happy with music. You might not make it. Yeah. To, yeah. to, to some and other people's eyes standard. Yeah. But if you're happy and you're supporting yourself and you're making music and you can go play a live show by yourself or what we, we know lots of people here in Phoenix that um uh, are solo artists that are extremely happy doing what they do because they've got their family and they're not looking to go join the rat race. They're, they're, they're very happy, you know, in their, yeah. in their slot. Yeah. So, it's all, it's a, it's personal choice. And, you know, we get exactly where artists come from. That's why we love doing this show because, you know, we're chasing the same dream that artists do, um, except on a different platform yeah, because, different you know, platform. we want to be the Bobby Bones, the Ty Bentleys, the Kelly Clarkson show and all that, you know, right. and we're doing the stuff that a lot of artists do where in evenings we deliver food, um, to yeah, stay afloat, our, side job, our little yeah. side jobs that we do to stay afloat. So we have to balance money. this. We've got a nine-year-old and a two-year-old and we have to balance. We homeschool the nine-year-old. And then we have to balance each other and all. So, you know, yeah, we, we. It gets crazy <laughs> sometimes. So we go show. through a lot of what artists goes through. And that's why I'm so excited to have people in that in y'all's position and other people's position to come on our show because we can talk about some of the grinding side, sacrifice side, struggle side, you know, because I think sometimes people, they see the glory of like Blake Shelton, but they don't see the, what it takes to get there, the sacrifices. So take a few moments, just tell us about the sacrifices that y'all have had to make through y'all's career. Uh, we're 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 in the throes of one right now. Um, we had a we had a trip planned to uh, our friend. Mm -hmm. to celebrate a sixty a sixtieth birthday. Oh wow! Oh, wow. COVID out of the blue. Uh, I, I won't get into the weeds about the situation that made it made it um, a little more urgent than than a normal offer. But basically, a, a show came up that's right in the middle of that show uh, that that trip, and oh, so wow. Oh, wow. I had to. <laughs> Make think an executive about, decision. Think, think about the crew. Think about all of the, the you know, the losses over the last 15 months. And so I'm going to do the show. And think hop, about having a nagging wife. <laughs> <laughs> never entered my mind. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to get on a six o'clock flight and fly back, jump in the car and drive to this trip and get catch the last two days. Um, that's a that's one example. Um mm -hmm. Uh, when you're somewhere international and 
you miss your you you miss the first steps or you miss the first words or you miss the first graduation or those things that uh they're just a day but then as they add up they become you you look at how much of 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 your family's interaction you weren't part of mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that that adds up there's again there's it's a struggle to make enough money to support yourself let alone a whole you know, band, a, a family. And, and yeah. then you, and then when you get to this point and there's a band and a crew and a bus and a driver, you're, and they all have families and they all have families. And, and a lot of them are, 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 are little kids. They're, they're thinking about the same thing. So we're, because yeah, a lot of people think artists make all this money and they forget, you know, there's all the crew and sometimes a hundred people that's being paid. They yeah. don't make as much as people right. think. No, no. I'm, I mean, when when we're in full blown touring mode, um, a full thirty to forty percent of it goes to travel, between wow. airfares and bus yeah. and fuel and and getting there. And one of the funniest things is that we constantly get this feedback: "Please come to Savannah. Yeah. Please come to Atlanta. Please come to wherever. Please come to our town." Mm -hmm. And I write back over and over and over again. We don't just get in the bus and go look for a show. <laughs> There's an agent. They take a percentage. There's management. There's blah, blah, blah. Right. And so tell your venue, tell your favorite theater that you I reach out. Theater. Yeah. It has happened. One phone call got us a show once because the oh, wow. person that had just gotten the job went, Little River Band is still touring. Well, I love Little River <laughs> Band. And then they made the call and then we ended up going there. One phone call did it. That can happen, um, but it's this this um, misconception that we just kind of pile into the bus on Thursday night and go look for an empty theater. It, that's not the way it works. So. Yeah, and there, I mean, there's so much had, statistics. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we had um, some friends tell us when we moved into a, when we lived in Florida and we moved into a neighborhood and they we met them and they then you know figured out Wayne's in the band and whatever, and they said to us. Wow. After getting to know us and knowing us for several years, they said, we had no idea what went into a tour. And putting on a show. <laughs> like, because as, as a fan going to a show, they would just go to a, hear an artist. They would buy their ticket, go hear an artist and leave. They had no idea all of the work that goes into coordinating the show's and the tour, and then what happens day of. That, mm -hmm. That's the other mm -hmm. thing that's crazy because we, we know people all over the country and we have wonderful friends and they're always so excited when they see that a show is coming close to them because oh, they're like, oh, we get to spend time with you guys and all that. And <laughs> It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Like that. I there, mean, the day is, no is you roll in, the band is dumped at the hotel, <laughs> the bus and the crew yeah. go to the venue, the crew could work all day and set up four o'clock a sound check five o'clock is dinner then you wait for the show if it's an early show if it's not you go back to the hotel and you wait to be brought back to the venue and then the crew is still working and they're loading out and then you get on the bus and you go somewhere else that's wow. the day and so it it is kind of interesting because people they, think it's glamorous they absolutely do absolutely do. that that 90 minutes that's the glamour part that's the glamour part, and that's yeah, the part that the everybody show. waits for. We we do too. Uh, but um, the rest of it is, I'm sorry, but we're at work. Yeah, we're not on vacation. It, it, as right. as it's portrayed in a lot in of movies, movies and stuff, and how much fun it is. I mean, especially at age seventy plus, uh, the you know there there are no late night parties anymore. You know, it's straight to the bunk and sleep and get ready for the next one. So mm -hmm. that's like, you know, people see us have this fun on this show where for 30 to 60 minutes. And I always try to tell people, yeah, that's the fun. That's but the, fun part, the yeah. leading up to that, the you know, reaching out to guests, booking guests, um, rebooking guests, um, rescheduling guests, yes. um, getting turndowns, getting, you know, got, dealing with chaos with the kids. And, and then dealing with right 15 before minutes shows. before each show, we have chaos sometimes. Yes, that's <laughs> and, a toddler meltdown or whatever. And, and so oh, it's like so much stuff goes on outside mm -hmm. the show that people yes. don't get to see. And that's why I always like to talk about with people I always on every episode talk about the grind, the sacrifices, because I think a lot of people 
like you said, they don't see that side of it. And and I and I'll be honest with you, although I knew tours were rough after hearing y'all, I'm like, okay, I I I know even more now. I mean, I already yes. know that it was a lot of work, right? They but it, I didn't it. hear it in the way y'all said it, and I love that because I think people need to hear this who are fans of different artists because sometimes fans can get upset and say, oh, well, um, so-and-so walk right by me and didn't wave and I waved and, yeah, and, and, stop and you may not have seen, I mean, you're in, you, you know, you're, you're thinking tonight, I got to be on stage at 6 p.m. It is 3 p.m. So you're focused on, okay, what do I have to do before then? You're not focused on what's around you a lot of times. It's true. It's true. Um, the, uh, you said something, it, it just escaped my mind. Oh, I know what it was. Um, uh, even people in the business, to be mm -hmm. honest, because, um, you know, some people are in the business, but they don't travel. They, they're, they're in their office. They're doing whatever oh, okay. scheduling, whatever part mm -hmm. of the, part mm -hmm. of the chain they're in. Um, and one of them decided, well, oh, I would really like to come, you know, come on the road. And so oh, wow. he, he got on the bus with us. And by the end of the second day, he was exhausted. He had to quit and go get a flight home. He said, I, am, I had no idea. Even though I know what you do, I had no idea what yeah. it is to do it. Because the travel, the time, the thing, get up, go do this, get out of their way, look out, watch out, so on and so forth. And it's like, when do you stop and take a break? Well, you don't until you're done with the with with the with the run. He, he so lasted the tour is one hours. month, two months. It's not yeah. until the end of that. Yeah. When we met, we were going on the road for for six and seven weeks at a time. Wow. Oh, wow. Here's another twist to the whole thing is that this band started in Australia, and there have always been a lot of Australians associated with our tours. Oh, wow. Well, you, so we used to, the people would fly over. It's very expensive. It's very long. So they fly over, and there's a block of time booked out. <laughs> So when we first met, I'd leave for six, seven weeks. And we do we were doing five and six shows a week to wow. to pay for all of this uh entourage to, to be going around. Uh and and you 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 just don't realize what it's like to do to work seven weeks in a row with maybe a day off. But but not no no days off guarantee or where you'll be when you're in a day. You could have your day off in a bus. Right. So you're sleeping. You're in a bunk. Um, it's it's stuff like that that is even an extra twist uh, wow. in our past. Um, everybody lives in America now. It's a different story. But um, our first how many years? Three four years were 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 like that. And she was like, "Wait a minute, you're leaving again? Where will I?" See <laughs> You'll see me in Minneapolis. Here's, you know, here's here's the day you can come up to Minneapolis. The other thing people don't understand too about a tour is, they'll they'll call and they'll say, "Oh, hey, I've got twelve friends I want to bring to the show." Mm -hmm. Oh, and, you know, and you, we don't. The venue dictates. Yeah, y'all don't control that. Yeah, we don't control no. that. No. And then the other thing is, well. There, you're per performing, so you can put me on the front row, right? <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way. No. We, I mean, it, it truly like you better will and deal with the venue, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's stated in a contract an artist will get X amount of tickets, yeah. but yeah. a lot of times the venue will cross that out, and the oh, artist wow. gets wow. no tickets. And oh, we wow. certainly aren't guaranteed where the seats will be. Yeah. And so, you know, you don't you feel bad because. You don't want to let your friends down or, you know, but you also don't want them to think you're coming across as, no, we can't do that yeah. because we don't want to do yeah. it. It's not because we don't want to do it. It's because we can't do it. You know, we, there have been times, there's been a lot of times when I've had to buy a ticket to, oh, to wow. be at his show. <laughs> So, you know, it's it's just one of those wow. things that people just it's it's more of the same that we're talking about. Now that's All the first I've heard of that. Don't. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah, that people don't understand. Yeah. You know, if we have a show where maybe the venue only gave us 10 tickets and there's, you know, there's press people, there's um maybe there's industry people that need to be there for that night. And then remember, there's five band guys and, and four crew and our driver that also we all those tickets have to be shared with all those people. So oh, if, wow. you if you only wow. got 10 tickets to start with, 
you've got to dole it out. And so, I mean, there have been. So you might get one extra, not 10. Maybe. Exactly. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, like I said, we've had to buy a ticket for me. Hmm. Um, and that's fine. I, we, yeah. But I just, yeah. I, I like for people to understand that it's not controlled by the artist. I love that. Yeah, I love where this is going. Now that we talked a little bit about the sacrifice and side of the field, let's go the other way. What are a few moments when you look back on your long career and you're like, wow, that was amazing. I got to do that. Um, there are th there are many. Um, at the top of the list has to be that I met my wife. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And it was a great, and, and it's a great story too. Um, tell us about was, it. Yes, please tell. Well, us. it was an industry night, and in Nashville, and um, the the front of the venue was occupied by industry people wanting to hear. We've got new music. The band is still mm -hmm. touring, whatever. Mm -hmm. So they were all invited to come to this show, and industry nights basically look like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. And it did. <laughs> She had bought an eight. She had bought an eight dollar ticket with with three other of her beautiful friends, and and about halfway through the show, they'd had enough. Then, because the whole room was being influenced by this attitude up front, so she came up front. She saw the bouncer. She slipped the bouncer a bill, and suddenly there's four pretty girls standing in front of the stage, and then there's four guys wanting to meet the pretty girls, and then it's suddenly it's a party, and she literally <laughs> rescued the night. Oh, wow. And I figured I'd never oh, wow. see her again, but, you know, thank you very much. And I go backstage and she knew people. She was there. We met. And so that's how all that happened. So that that is, uh, you know, an ultimate uh, great night. But um, we we played. Um, I'll go all the way back to playing behind the Iron Curtain mm -hmm. before the wall mm -hmm. came down. Oh, um, wow. An amazing experience because it's the only time on tour I've ever been where I felt like I was not on the planet. <laughs> the oh, wow. the planet looked it looked different it looked dead mm -hmm. it was really an amazing thing i know it was a, a perception but um we had been in west germany for and and the rest of europe and then all of a sudden we crossed the border and it looked like the it looked like the land had died it was quite an amazing yeah. thing and it oh, was wow. we performed in one of the um uh coliseums or arenas that had been built for Hitler to give his speeches. And they wow. left the podium, they left it there as a reminder, you know, mm -hmm. this is, and then, you know, a, a, a couple of years later, the wall came down, which was, which was fabulous. Um, yes. We played- but you got to experience uh, it beforehand. So that was pretty cool. A, exactly right. It, uh, not a lot of people can, can say that. Um, we were the first band to play in South Korea. We were the first pop band to go to South Korea. Right. And wow. that was a that was a big deal and a, a cultural experience, yeah. you know, to see how they lived, uh, you know, fabulous venues. We toured in the days when our hit songs were on the radio. We were touring with the likes of the Eagles and Hart and Jimmy Buffett and Fleetwood Mac, uh, Foreigner, et cetera, et cetera. All of those experiences were were fantastic in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I will say that the one that hit me square in the face, though, was my very first arena show with Little River Band was my 30th birthday. Oh, wow. And I had only been in the band for, well, we had done two or three shows before that, but they were clubs. They were small clubs in, in Germany getting ready to do this show. And it was us, Don McLean, Bob Marley, and Fleetwood Mac. We had Don McLean on not long ago. We last did. Year, last last he was year. a great guy. Yeah. He, and he went up in front of 125,000 people all by himself, acoustic guitar, <laughs> and, and killed it, you know, for an hour. But um, 30th birthday, it was cold and rainy, and um, it's Olympic Stadium in Munich with about 125,000, 130,000. Oh, wow. We went on stage, and the clouds parted, and the sun shone down on these people for an hour. And we got done and it was it was it was fantastic. And we walked off stage. The clouds came back in and started raining again on Bob Marley. So you know, I think these guys these guys must know somebody, but um that <laughs> that that you know, there's just so many of them. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I, I I like I say, they 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 all have to rise to the top. Um when Charles and Diana got married, they did a tour <laughs> of the um of the 
the um, Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They came to Australia for a week and we were asked to perform for them. And we didn't know this, but there was a state meet and greet afterwards with, I mean, police and security and all kinds of stuff. But Charles and Diana wow. came through the line and talked to us and <laughs> she knew something personal about every one of us. Oh, wow. She had done homework to know something to say about, she said, I, you know, I know you're the only American and you live in California. You know, how are your children? Do they miss you when you're gone? That kind of thing. I'm like, how do you, you've got to <laughs> meet like amazing. in every country, every day, all these people, you know enough about this band to, to talk to us personally. It was, it was wow. quite amazing, wow. quite amazing. Um, so the stuff like that, it's, it's, um, there's a lot, a lot of great memories uh, being able to travel the world and, 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 and see things that, that, you know, you wouldn't see being a, a session player in Chicago, like, like, like <laughs> I started out. So. So y'all just released um, fun favorites. Tell us about oh, that. Oh yes, fan favorites. Fan favorites. I mean, fan favorites. Um, our fan club loves the fact that we like to interact with them um, and with with crowds. It's it's been hard. Of course, we aren't going to be able to do it for a while, but um, we look forward to getting back to that. Um, so before I talk about fan favorites, the 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 thing about that is that when people come through the line and we hear their stories. Mm -hmm. It takes us out of our bubble. There are a lot of acts that won't do it. They just yeah. don't want to mm -hmm. do it. They don't want to give the time or they're worried about getting sick or something like that. But um, we try to stay healthy. And when they come through the line and they tell us their stories, we're not in our bubble anymore. We're hearing from the street what the music means to people. And that wow. is amazing to us. It keeps us uh, energized ab ab about making sure that we don't take anything for granted. And so tell us a fan because, story that kind of stands out. Do you want to, well, there, the one that comes to mind that is, is related to one of our original songs since, since we started making new music again. Um, we've got a song called there's a bus leaving and mm -hmm. it's literally about the, the show's over, the bus is done. And, and these people see these taillights leaving town, uh, so, you know, all romantic. What a great night. What a great show. And there goes the bus and off they go, you know, uh, gypsies in the night kind of thing. Uh, I dedicated it to truck drivers because truck drivers live on the road. They do the same thing. They miss. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And so I started saying that about drivers and a guy came up to me uh, after the show and said, um, uh, uh, my, you know, my, my son, I walked my son down a dirt road and he got on a bus and he went to fight in Iraq and he never came back. Wow. Oh, those are the kind of, those are the heartwarming stories that you go, <laughs> that song was written for this thing, but somebody else had a completely different impression. They interpret it a different way. Yes. Exactly. And it's, it's They're never left people. us that that man came up and shared that with us because it was, I mean, that's the power of music. Yes. That's the power of music. That's the power of relating to people and letting them feel that range of emotion during the show. Um, and that's where some people find comfort. Another one that still to this day, um, a guy came through the line one night and he said, you know, I was in the Gulf War, I think it was. Yes. And he said, uh, we would get in our tank every morning and we would it had a CD player. I mean, who knew tanks had CD players? Right? <laughs> um, but he said, we pop in this, the, the greatest hits and we would listen to help is on its way going out for wow. whatever we were doing that day <clears throat> and coming back to base every night, we would listen to cool change. And to the, I mean, I'm telling you to this day, that still wow. gives me chills because that's the, like you say, that's the power of music. And that's what music, music soothes, and helps and heal people yes, through does. so many different life events. There was one other one too that stands out because it came from a young person. Th that was the military side of, of mm -hmm. a part of what we, we you know, feel. Uh, but we're at the same venue, as a matter of fact, where I met her this, this uh, ironically, we were there a different time and there was a young girl standing just off to the, to my left. And she was just her. She was just crying all night long, and her her mascara was running, and it almost looked like 
clownish. Yeah. Yeah. It was that, it was that yeah. thing, but she was mm -hmm. just emotional all night long. And wow. we came off stage and I went out to the gate and I said, I hope you're okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, we, I, we, we certainly didn't mean to upset you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just because it, it went on for 90 minutes. And so she said, you don't understand. I didn't know your music when it was on the radio. I knew your music when my parents played it in the house and every song has marked a, a part of my childhood. Wow. And I saw them all come back to me. Um, graduations, her parents had split up. There was a song that helped her get through that. So like Rhonda said, good times, bad times, those, those memories come flooding back to people. And we want to honor that and, um, you know, make sure that we represent them so that they can either relive them or start and make a new one. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, so it's true. Too, yeah. Is that mm -hmm. it, it's really, I know when I'm there and I am, I sometimes I'll be at the signing line after the show too. And I, it's an honor to have people share those super personal feelings and moments with us. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. th some of those stories are very private. You know, but to yeah. to feel yeah. comfortable enough that that's what the music means, and to feel comfortable enough to share the stories with us, that's an honor. I mean, it is for me. I'm, you know, I'm no, no, without question, without question. That's, yeah. that's and, you know, part of and you're so right though with how music moves, because you know, like every time we listen to the radio and they play the Shania Twain from this moment, we almost end up in because that's our wedding song from 18 years ago. Almost mm -hmm. 19 years now, right. and we're coming up. On, you know, next year will be our 20th wedding anniversary, and we've already said, you know what, we're going to renew our vows, and we're going to do Shania's other song, "You're Still the One." Because I get, it. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. I got, I got to share one other funny one with you too. This was, uh, this is a, a whole nother <laughs> angle of a band that's 46 years old. Um, oh wow! So we do a show, and it was put on. It was, it was sponsored by. A, a city organization. They didn't have a venue, whatever. So we were in the baseball field of the high school. That's where they rented. That's where they set up and whatever. And all of our dressing rooms and everything else was, was a 50 yard walk to get over to the high school. That's where the green room was. That's where we yeah. were hanging. And um, principal of the high school and city, you know, uh, dignitaries, whatever they want the, they want the pre-show picture. And um, there was one girl young girl standing off to the front there. And uh, I kept saying, come on, come join us. And she wouldn't do it. She just kept shaking her head no. And finally the mayor of the town, sorry, the principal of the high school says to me, that's my daughter. She's very shy. She's not gonna come up here and do this. And I said, that's your oh. daughter. We gotta get her up here. <laughs> oh. She's not gonna come up here. There's, there's more to it than that. And I said, well, let's do it. It's a picture. Get your daughter up here to this. She said, no, you don't understand. She was conceived to your music. <laughs> she's too oh, embarrassed to come wow. up here because she was conceived to your music playing and and i said well ma'am we don't do child support but by god we're going to do a picture with your daughter and so we brought her up there and put her on around her. so it's very funny so oh, it, wow. we we cover from you know from weddings to births to to proms to 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 people <laughs> passing know. away it's 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 across the board after all this time you know i love that now as y'all yeah. know a lot of people, they see you as the artist, but they don't see the teams behind you. And in our opinion, they never yeah, get they the don't. love they deserve. I mean, even on award shows, they get, what, 10 seconds you know, to talk yeah. about the team. We always yeah. want to give um, each guest a chance just to tell us about the team that makes them who they are. So yes. tell us about your team. Yours is a little unique. Oh, ours is our, ours is. We we have a an eclectic mix of of, of teammates. Yeah, but but, um, I, I, but I, there's not the multi layers like there are in. There is no tour manager or there's not a management company. I mean, you're you're yeah. looking at it. Yeah, so that's him. So, wow. but there is a there is a a group of people that are very responsible for what happens. Yeah, I mean, if 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 we go from when the phone rings. The phone rings an agent. We've been with him for 20, since 96, so 20, 25 years now. Uh, yeah, 26 years. Uh, super important that they and we 
are upfront and open and communicate about what we need and whether something's going to work or not, because they could book us more than we do, but some of yeah. it just logistically, you can't get there. Yeah. Or yeah. you run ourselves ragged that when we get there, we're too, the show suffers. So <laughs> there's, there's a good <laughs> communication there with them. That's when they call me, we've booked you. <clears throat> and I am in charge of getting us there and getting us home and, and all of the little stuff. The next person that finds out about it is our production manager because he's the guy that calls the venue and says, what's the PA, what's the stage, you know, what's the logistics of what's going to be there. Um, and then we all get on the bus. So we've got five band, four crew and a bus driver. Um, we are finally in a position where we decided to buy our own bus because so, uh, we hmm. were constantly being bounced from one bus to another and, and a <laughs> There's good drivers and there's bad drivers and there's good buses and there's bad buses. And we are on the bottom of that totem pole around Nashville. By the way, everybody lives in Nashville except us. Um, keyboard player just moved to Dallas, but everybody's focused. <laughs> the hub is in Nashville. So we know where you're headed uh, quite well. But um, the funny thing about our crew is our crew is all of a single mind. They don't want to be seen or known. Huh. They don't want hmm. any recognition at all. It's funny you say what you say, but if somebody did say that about those crew members, they wouldn't go on stage. They'd yeah. wave from the yeah. crowd yeah. and they'd sit back there because they, <laughs> they know the show has to focus on the people that are delivering the music. And so I, I don't, I can't even say their names at a show. They don't huh. want to be known and identified, wow. but they are first rate in everything they do. And we've got, Somebody runs the sound that you hear. Somebody mm -hmm. runs the sound that we hear in our ears from the stage. Somebody runs the lights and somebody takes care of all of our guitars. Wow. Between those four guys, they load in, set us up, wire us up, do sound check, run the show and then load out. And that's the way the day goes. Um, the rest of the support staff is wives and family who sacrifice, you know, their, their, their family member to at least two to three, four days a week um, that we leave, we leave town. And then of course there is our driver who, while all that's going on, he's sleeping. We wake him up at loadout. He comes, he drives the bus and then he drives all night to get to the next venue. Mm -hmm. So this team has to, um, uh, <laughs> somebody just jumped in, but we love the crew. They rock. Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> You're correct. Um, they do rock, but but the 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 anonymity is something that they're all unanimous about. They don't want to be yeah. singled out or or talked about. So, but they everyone has been around for a long time. Like yeah yeah, we're, we're all a family. We don't every year we don't change crew or any of that kind of thing. Um, um you know if if we make a decision, it's or if Wayne makes a decision, he's making it because we've got, like I said, there's four other band members and families and crew members and families and our driver. So I think we're fortunate to have the group of people around us that we do because we all get along. It's hard to find all, it. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, uh, it's also comforting too, though, you know, to have that support around you or around the guys. And, and you know, speaking of team members, we've got a third co-host, our we little do. nine year old that yeah. we bring on to ask a couple of questions. So Sandy's gonna go get I'll him. Get him. His name's Christopher. So we got Fantastic. a two year old that we'll be bringing on when she gets older, but right now we got Fantastic. nine. But finish what you're saying. Well, I was gonna I was gonna throw in that if, if I do the math quickly, there's something on the order of forty to fifty people. Wow. Connected to this what you enterprise. Do. They, they don't all go with us and they don't all work with us, but their family members, extended family and so on and so forth. It's very, all of those, those people have to be considered as to some of the decisions we make too. Like, are we going to, are we going to go out of the country for three weeks and struggle? Probably not. We're going to stay right in our sweet spot and do what we do and, and uh, not go out and try to, you know, break new ground. Like I say, we still got ha we still got a lot of America to um, uh, to reach. And there's yeah. one other person that's a very vital, important part 
Oh, um, yes. She, the person that she runs the fan club, but she also is in charge of all the PR. Oh, and, wow. And, um, you know, she, she lives just outside of Nashville. And she's a vital part because she's, you know, she keeps... Uh, a good interaction going with the fan club and she mm -hmm. works her tail off for all the PR. So, and your, you know, your, your request for us to come on the air came through her. So she's, she's coordinating all of that PR and social media that is, is, is very important to a, a vintage band as well, because the, the social media is what spreads us, yeah. spreads the word to a younger, you know, a younger audience that's, that's more computer savvy and whatever. So, we're we're trying to cover all the bases. So who who is our guest uh, host here? Uh, Christopher. <laughs> hi, Christopher. I'm Wayne, hi. and this is Rhonda. Nice to meet you. Uh, uh hi, hi, Wayne and Rhonda. Uh, Rhonda. <laughs> so that's me too. So what's your favorite food? What's my favorite food? Our favorite yeah. food? Uh, yes. Good question. Um. Well, I'm, I don't eat meat, so I would have to say my favorite food is probably fish, cooked fish, you know, barbecued fish, that kind of thing, and then all the all the trimmings. What about you? Well, you can never go wrong with a big old bowl of spaghetti and meat sauce with meatballs. <laughs> True. As much as I want to watch my carbs every now and then, I have to jump in and have that big old bowl of pasta. Christopher, what's your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. All right, yeah. There you go. Can't go wrong with pizza, right? You cannot go, cannot wrong, with go pizza. wrong with pizza. Good pizza is, pizza fixes everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's a fair TV show? Uh, boy, there have been plenty. There have um, been some good ones. We've really been enjoying um, recently, and I guess through last year, um, A Million Little Things we watched. And uh, New Amsterdam, we watched. We like New Amsterdam a lot. That's yeah. that's that's a great show, heartfelt, and, <laughs> and a million little things. Good family story. Um, if I got to pick an old show, I'm gonna pick uh, the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> I knew you were uh, gonna say that. <laughs> Andy and Mark, you gotta do it. <laughs> What's yours? My SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh. All right. He's That's still awesome. around, believe it or not. Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, what's Bob been cool? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. What's been That's cool is that. because he watches a lot of mm -hmm. Disney and Nickelodeon shows now. Because we do not just artists, but we bring actors and actresses on too. We've right. been able to bring a lot of the um, actor and actresses from his shows onto our show. Hey, Christopher, are you back? Are you back in school, or are you studying at home? Uh, uh, gee, I'm homeschooled. <laughs> Homeschooled. Oh, that's right. Right. Sandy said that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Do you get summers <coughs> off? Huh? Do we still well, do we're work. still doing work now. Still doing a little work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. work. Yep. He, he's doing some work still. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's it? Huh? Is your mom a hard teacher? Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> good answer, good answer, good answer yeah. Christopher. Good answer, yeah. Mm, so, uh, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, got to think about that one too. Um, yeah, gosh, wow, I think m one of mine might be, um, it gets the, the good very questions. First Star Wars movie. Hmm. Mm, that's a good and one. I love Star Trek too. Star Trek's my favorite, that's probably my favorite. That's my go-to TV show, yeah. Hmm. How about you? My is, mine is the Minions movie. Oh, yeah. The Minions. Yep. yep. It does all the Despicable <laughs> Me's, the Minions, all that. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I like the one, too. Um, the Fantastics or the... the, the, who, the it's a family of superheroes. The, the, the mom and dad were superheroes. The Incredibles. And then the, kids, the Incredibles, that's one. Yeah, that one's fun. That one's a good one. <laughs> Bye, thanks. Bye, Bye Christopher. <laughs> Take care. Nice. Yeah. He's been in almost every show and he loves it. Like I said, we got a two year old daughter that when she gets older, she'll be plugged in it. It's funny. Yeah, I'm about Caitlin. to be I'm about to be fifty in August and we've got a nine year old and a two year old. Yes. Yeah. They'll God keep us you. young. <laughs> <laughs> keep your yeah. keep your track shoes on. There you go. Yes. <laughs>
right? And what would you like for your legacy to be? What would you ultimately like to be known and remembered for? Um, that we, all of, all of what we talked about together, that, that we gave back and did not take this for granted. Um, there have been there have been people come and go in the band, and um, I I can't speak for them, but knowing them, I have a feeling that they they didn't think that they they, they weren't aware of, of the 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 good that the band could continue to do in terms of of helping other yeah. people. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, very talented people and all that, but at that point in the career, the travel from Australia and whatever. Um, there, there, there's just so much good that this band can do. And that's what that's my hope is to get to the band's 50th anniversary oh, and, wow. and, and go out with a bang with some, you know, some great cause to, uh, to raise a lot of money. We've been mm -hmm. doing it little by little as we go, but, um, <coughs> music, you know, we're, we're not alone in, in making good music. There are, millions of people making good music it's what you do with it once it's out there that yeah. to me yeah. that's what's the most important thing to me um because this is a blessing this is something uh, uh, like i say we didn't we used to think bands weren't going to last for more than two or three years mm. and now i'm mm -hmm. 41 years in this one and wow. and there's an opportunity to um to spread that word well i think too and i you can probably elaborate or, or expand on this, but as an artist starting out in a band uh, <laughs> when he did 45 years ago, you know, a band is going through this extreme blow up and they're, you know, they're just on these massive stages and they are, they're experiencing all of that and they're living all of that. And they're also 40 years younger than they are now. And so their priorities are different. Their thought processes are different. And I think even in the 20 years, 21 years we've been together, we have seen, you know, our focus is for, for him and LRB to still go out there and to touch people with the music and to share the hits and for people to have a good time. But we've expanded on that in that we now know that we have a pathway to give back in these communities that we go into. And that pathway is LRB. So I don't know that when, you know, I don't know that a young artist right now, that that would be like the top priority for them. Like yeah. They probably yeah. aren't even thinking that way. But as you get older and you realize what the success has, me, has meant to you and what you can do with that success, then you start to think about, these are the things that I want to do to use this pathway. I, I, I think that's kind well, of absolutely your perspective changes yeah. when you're raising your family and you're mm -hmm. cultivating your business. Those are your priorities. Um, at this point, we, we are what we are. We, we know what we can and can't uh, do and expand on. And now at this point in life, it's, that's that I, I feel it's a responsibility to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you did hit a little bit earlier about the rivers run through. Rough. Run, run. Oh, I did, but so I didn't much. name it. Um, and you my, didn't name it, very, but you did talk very about responsible. See, uh, that's part of the team that we have yeah, that keeps us on track. <laughs> yeah, we just didn't she's name our, it. She's our, I knew what you were talking about earlier when you were talking about it, but we forgot yeah. to name it. Yeah. She's, she's, our, she's, she's, our, she's my guide dog. Um, so <laughs> the, the, the name of that thing that I did with my friend is called Little Rivers Run Rough. And we named it that because this has not always been a smooth uh, yeah. you know, yeah. carefree, exactly. uh, uh, vacation trip. You know, there's, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of, been, a lot of ups and downs and a lot of, um, uh, personal, uh, I don't want to call them crises, but personal, um, yeah. you know, interactions that situations, that, <laughs> situations. There you go. As a matter of fact, the last episode is called the situation. Well done. Chris. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but it's called little rivers run rough and you can find it at little rivers run rough.net. 
Okay. Or you can go to littleriverband.com and there's a link there. You can go to the fan club. It's out there. People can find it if, if they want to. And um, uh, it's just an interesting, even a further look behind the scenes going all the way back to what things were like in 1965. Littleriversrunrough.net. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you could relay any message to your fans, what would you want to tell them? Uh, we miss them. Uh, it's been a long 15 months. Um, we truly appreciate and are thankful for their support. Um, there are lots of people that go to shows, but they go to shows and they go away happy. They go away. They might make a comment or two, but our fan club is loyal. Um, yeah. to the point where they they understand a lot of the things that we've talked about today that other people might not because they ask, they're there, they see it. And, um, you know, they know the crew by name. They know who the driver is. They know what the next thing is that, that we have to do. So um, that kind of moral support is very, very important. And let's talk okay, about the Mom, book. Real there's quick. another one. Yes, it's called A Different Life. Rhonda's book yeah. is called A Different Life. It's available at Amazon. There are some incredible, she is an amazing cook. Um, even at a time when she couldn't smell or taste, she was making oh, wow. some of the best, uh, the best recipes. Uh, and, but they're very Southern. They're, they're spicy. They're, 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 they're not all that, uh, fat free or healthy, but damn, they're good. Um, mm -hmm. but her book is, is about, um, some of our adventures and and really pulling back the curtain on what it's like behind the scenes. So a different life available on Amazon. I'm not going to say it again, Donna. So don't flash it at me. Well, I flashed it back up. There, so. yeah, it <laughs> oh, it's on the screen. OK, great. All right. Sorry. Yeah, because yeah, um, I, thought she, I thought she was just talking to us. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the great thing about StreamYard that we use is when people yes. comment, I can pull the comments up. And we love oh, that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. We've and all I did was I, I wasn't aware of StreamYard, but um, I've seen the name around it. This this works flawlessly. We haven't frozen or, or whatever, you know, that usual internet thing. So this has been oh, yeah. it's yeah, a it's lot, a it's a, To me, it's a lot more platform. stable. And I can, as you see, I can brand it because I got the Chris and Sandy show at the top, you right. know. And, you know, I, I can't put 100 people on it. You can put up, to, right. to, I think, 10. Yeah, right. it's either eight or right. 10 at, at once. But that's but, you know, with what we do, we don't need 100 people. You know, that's true. Well, those those group gatherings, um, they're, tough. they're tough because people want to talk and you're constantly trying to go, wait a minute. I don't think there's one platform that has really um, mastered uh, and has the ability to truly uh get it you know to have that many people on it it, it yeah. it's mm -hmm. over the last year it certainly has been a learning curve for all of us speaking of that you said something about what we'd like to say to the fans a lot of the fans have been going to us where have you been for the 15 months why didn't you do new music why didn't you get on there get together so on and so forth yeah. well first yeah. of all we don't live together so doing that from separate cities impossible is <laughs> virtually <laughs> impossible virtually <laughs> impossible but what happens with these feeds is as soon as you add the complexity of music the feed just freezes because it can't handle yeah. all that oh, yeah. information. So yeah. we're, we are sorry for not trying to beat the, beat the game, but we did try and it just doesn't work. And so all the more reason that we're glad to be, we're glad the bus is rolling and come July, come July, we don't have a weekend off until Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yes. we're, we're, Time to hit the road again. Uh, on the hit road. The road. There is one thing too. To all of the fans that are out there listening, if you want to hear Little River Band or want to see Little River Band in your area, call your venue. Like we can't, we can't stress that enough um, because I I see a lot of the comments too um, through the fan book and or fan page, fan club page, and we try to interact as much as possible. But we constantly, when are you coming here? When are you coming here? So we would. Uh, love for the fans to call their venues and request and uh you know who knows you never know it may just it may just be that one phone call that one brings call. little river band to your city so. can make it happen yeah, so love, absolutely. love that yeah. so any final yeah. words as we come to a close thank you for having us on no um we've 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 we've, we've covered all the important things in, to both of us and and it was a pleasure talking to you and meeting your boy and and um 
uh, it, this was fun. This was really, you know, a good time to just just chat. You know, not no pressure, no time limits or anything. It's very cool. I love that. Um, and, and, and we so enjoyed it. And, and, and we enjoyed having you on the show today. And we definitely look forward to having you all back. Yes. Our pleasure. And if you're ever near the show, please let us know. Especially, especially, I mean, good luck if you move to Nashville or wherever you are. If you're, if you're near a show that, that, that we're, you know, we're doing, please come and say hello. If you need any tips on Nashville, uh, drop that down an email. So or near to me or something, my email address. And uh, I can uh, raise, raise, and go back, go back every month. So my mom is still there. So, so I'm happy, happy, happy to I love that. point you guys in any kind of direction you need. We, have, oh, we definitely appreciate great. that. Appreciate that. And we don't want to take up more of your time. It's been over an hour. So, you know, we yeah. try to keep it to 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And it's, uh, we try to respect the people's time. Yeah. You can't, 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 can't bust it down to an hour, an hour when it comes to talking. It's all good. Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. You too. Happy Father's Day. Well, thanks. And you too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thanks.